Taking their cues from Cairo, demonstrators took to the streets in two other Middle East countries today. In Algeria, riot police tried to block thousands of demonstrators demanding the president's ouster from reaching the main square in the capital. And in Yemen, police used clubs to beat back pro-democracy marchers demanding the departure of their leader. As you can see, a very busy time in the Middle East. And for more perspective on what may lie ahead for that part of the world, we are joined by former Undersecretary of State Nicholas Burns. Nick, good evening. Good evening. Given the success of the demonstrators in Egypt, what do you think? Are these protests likely to become more intense in other parts of the region? Well, this was an extraordinarily important moment in the history of the Middle East, and Egypt's the heart and soul of the modern Middle East, so I think it's bound to have an impact. And you saw today, in addition to Algeria and Yemen, the Palestinian Authority announced new elections. The two countries to watch will be Iran, not an Arab country, but a Middle Eastern country, where, where the reform movement might protest on Monday. And can this have an influence on Iraq? on the democratic forces there. So I think we have to look very widely throughout the Arab world. I think we're bound to see an impact. Let's go back to Egypt for a minute. The military is now in charge. This is the same military that brought you Hosni Mubarak and Omar Suleiman. Is someone who is very familiar with that part of the world. What do you think? Can the military be trusted? Well, they had a good start today of the transition. They made a, a series of announcements that said they believed in democracy. They wanted to lead the country towards a democratic government through a transition. But the key question there is, is this government, this military government, going to be willing to give up control? Will it provide for a transition that allows lots of different voices, religious and secular and democratic, to be heard? I don't think they've given any indication yet as to the details of how this transition can be run. And uh, back in this country, President Obama has said this is the beginning, not the end. How do you see the White House playing this out over the next few months? I think the United States has, I think President Obama has skillfully handled the situation until now, but it's going to get more difficult because now we've got to use the considerable influence that we have to try to push this military government to open up its system to reformers. And can the reformers uh, uh, translate all that passion and, and idealism in the streets into effective action at the conference table in convincing military leaders to give up the power they've had for 60 years since Gamal Abdel Nasser took power in a coup in 1952. So lots of questions. The United States will not be at the center of this. This is an Egyptian drama, but we're an influential country and we should stand up for reform, but also hope that a moderate regime, one that will be at peace with Israel, uh, will emerge from this crisis. Nicholas Burns, as always, thanks for your insight.